Now, Claire Kavanagh in the afternoon on your BBC local radio station. And we've got Americana duo Steve Balsamo and Rosalie Dayton here. They used to work as solo artists, but now they've got together to release their debut album, which is called Unfolding, and they're playing the old bookshop in Bristol tonight. Very nice snacks there as well. Hello, guys. Hello, Claire. How are you doing today? Good. Great, thanks for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. Any time. Now, did you guys know each other anyway? Presumably you did, and then decided to work together. We, we've known each other for 10 years. 15 or so, years. 15 years. 15 and years. and uh, I, Steve was, uh, Steve wanted a band called Stories, who I was a big fan of. And I uh, managed to get myself in that band. The band broke up and we decided we loved singing together so much. We'd carry on. The, dan- the band didn't break up immediately after you joined. Well, Half kind an of. hour later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, a couple, that, it was a couple about, of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. A <laughs> couple of weeks later. Um, now, tell us a bit about... The band was called The Stories, That's which right. lots of people know is yeah. quite a big deal, wasn't it? And um, why did you end up splitting up? Because you, you seem to be doing pretty well. We did loads of great stuff, Claire, and we had, we had some great fun. We toured all over the place. We toured people like, with people like Elton John. We were big fans of the I band. Know. And we, we just had some great fun. But we got to a stage where... To get to the next level, we needed another injection of money. Mm. The label we were on, uh, Warner Brothers Records, the, the, the label within Warner Brothers bro- broke up. So we got dropped, the boss got sacked. It was all of that kind of classic kind of mm. record industry nonsense. So we, we kind of drew a line under it and said, look, we'll, we may pick it up at some point later down the line. But what we did, what I'm very proud of, is that the band left a legacy of really nice songs. And because we were never kind of of the moment, we, we, we kind of hark back to the 1970s in our inspiration, if you like. Yeah. Um, they kind of, you could listen to them in 10 years' time and they'll st- still sound the same. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. But it's still there, it's still out there. Um, now, tell us how um, you found out that Elton John was a fan of yours. Well, he, he heard, he's a, Elton John's a massive supporter of all music, especially new music. He's, a, he's got an encyclopedic knowledge. He apparently got a copy of our record he was in Vegas. He really got into our record, and then he call. He ended up calling me at home and ask. You know, he, my wife answered the phone and. We How did bu- he get your number? Did well, he he called. It was who knows. <laughs> I think John, he knows people. He knows. He knows everybody. He, He's got he probably does number. know people. Yeah. <laughs> so he basically called me up and said, "Look, I really love the record." He started singing one of our songs down the phone at me. I had a slight nervous breakdown, and then. <laughs> <laughs> agreed to tour with him for, for the next couple of years. It was and at any, at any point did you think, that is not Elton John, that is somebody else taking the mic? Yes, until we were standing on stage and he was watching us. I <laughs> thought it was a wind-up. I kept pinching myself. But he was a great, we had great fun, we had a great, great time. And um, if you were touring with him, um, did you ever find out how many pairs of specs he had? Because that's something that's been debated on this show many times. There was a lovely guy that was his dresser, a guy called Kevin, who, we, you know, everyone became very friendly on the tour. And I happened to walk into the dressing area. There, there were a lot of shoes and shirts and there were a lot of sunglasses. Yeah. I'd say he's got 100,000. Do you not, think? Not on uh, tour. I reckon he's got... 100,000 no, specs. I think he's got... Six less after the stories yeah, joined we, the tour. We had a few away. <laughs> Sorry, Elton. Did you break the... Oh, no, you took them. <laughs> I, yeah. We had a few pairs of shoes. <laughs> um, that is a lot of two-for-one pairs, isn't it? It that is. That is a lot. Really? See, I've just got the two-for-one. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, um, so, so, so you guys got together and then you decided to record this album. And what was that experience like? Did you agree on what you wanted to put on it? It was, it was, yeah, we did. We, we got together. I mean, we started writing songs kind of in sound checks at the end of the stories, but um, it was, it's kind of a long process, four years of writing and recording. And, and, and we worked with a guy called Julian Wilson, who's in a band called Grand Drive. Great, great sing- singer songwriter. And we started at his South London studio very gently, with no expectation other than kind of a cathartic experience, really, after the breakup of the band, because it was quite, it was quite hard work, really. Yeah. Um, what, working with me? Yeah, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and so we started very gently and all of a sudden we had a bunch of songs that started to sound really good and really strong. When a band splits up like that, is it like a relationship ending? Have you had enough of each other it's, and you yes. want to move on, you know, go to the future, do something different? I think it can be. It certainly, it certainly was difficult with us and it was the cliche that you'd expect. It's like a six-way marriage and, you know, you know I've only got one marriage and Rosalie on the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost like we, we nearly broke up on the way here. I wanted to listen to Radio 4 and Rosie was all about 
That Taylor Swift girl. I have no idea. <laughs> Why weren't you listening to this show? That's just appalling. We couldn't um, get it on the way from you, you couldn't get No, that's fair enough. Um, I know, BBC Wells is very dominant, that side of the bridge. Yeah. Um, now, um, Rosalie, your, your um, folk background took you into a career with your own family. That's right. So yeah. that's how you started out, was it? I, I grew up on the road from the age of three. My first gig was when I was three, playing spoons and uh, harmony right? vocals, yeah. And then I progressed on to fiddle and mandolin. And then when I was about 12, I picked up the guitar and kind of shoved my dad out of lead vocals and <laughs> started started singing lead vocals, yeah. I love that. And at what point did you realise that um, you were actually doing it? That, that was kind of like a job. That was a thing that you did because you'd always grown up with that. It was. I thought it was the most normal thing to do until I went to school and then realised that kids didn't really go to work. <laughs> And not everyone played the spoons at the age of no, three. Exactly, <laughs> I was a maestro. So, how did you? What was that lifestyle like? Like growing up, like it was that? just normal. It was what it's, it's what we knew. My brothers and sisters get in the back of a van every school holiday, go around America. It was it was amazing, incredible, absolutely amazing. There's incredible. some amazing videos online of the band and when Rosie Shh. was. <laughs> Rosie was tiny and her sister was tiny. And yeah, my little sister's in a, in a buggy on Blue Peter and things like that, yeah. Yeah. It's fabulous. Well, we haven't just got you in here to chat. We'd like to hear you play. What are you going to do for us? Well, the, we're gonna, yeah. the title track of the album called Unfolding. OK, here we go. I'm right here on the table I've a cross upon a seal I'm not ready to be open, be unfolding. I'm in trouble, I'm a writer, I'm not saying what I feel. I would rather this would never. Be unfolding We all need Here's a little reason What I see When I look around I'm not gonna swear I'll be there I'm a speck On the horizon I'm a smile Upon a real I'm not asking To be what Is I'm for We all need Here's a little reason What I see When I look around I'm not gonna swear I'll be there Gorgeous. Fantastic. Great job, guys. That was wonderful. Yeah. So can we get the album now? It's going to be on in February. 
Okay. Next year, we're playing tonight with Callahan, a great friend of ours, a beautiful singer-songwriter at the old book, bookstore. Yeah. Um, we've got a single coming out soon, you know, and doing all that sort of thing. So this is the beginning of our um, attack on the airwaves. Yeah. <laughs> exciting times, exciting okay. times. Exciting. Do you get excited about things like that, something new? Really excited. Mm. I mean... Being a musician in today's world is a difficult gig. It's tough. Gig. It's yeah. a tough gig. It's a tough gig to, to make music, to, you know, because people would rather you didn't make music, I think, because the world is inundated with so much of it. Mm. So we've actually got it. We got a small record deal with a, with a label in Germany, which is really exciting. So we're going to get out into Europe and start playing. And just to be able to, to kind of live as a musician writing songs, it's a, it's a romantic mm. way to live and it's great. And we, yeah. we, we're very. Grateful for it, yeah. Well, we want you to keep making music. Thanks. Sounds really good. Uh, Fantastic. That's Steve Balsamo and Rosalie Dayton. You can see them tonight at the Old Bookshop. That's on North Street in Bristol. Great to meet you guys. Thanks Thanks so much. much. Bye. BBC.